Panasonic pushes ahead of Canon, Nikon, and Sony by unveiling a brand new 35 megapixel organic sensor that has a global shutter. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness of the laps on, guys. So, so good. So good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, or possibly something harder, as I always say. Depends on what part of the planet you're on, right, guys? So, today, this sensor is going to be coming out. They are unveiling it. It is an organic sensor. It is a Super 35. Should you care? Should you care? I think you should. I think you should. But before we dive into this, I encourage you to support the No Shave November fundraiser that I just started yesterday. This fundraiser is going to bring awareness to men's health. And we're going to directly support the St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. I love the organization and all that they do for kids that have cancer. Now the video introduction to that fundraiser, I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. Also, if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go pick them up over at jchristina.com. You can find 10 tips at making tack sharp images, for example. There's something there for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're an amateur, a pro-am, or a professional, you're gonna glean something from these eBooks and they're free. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. So getting right into this, Panasonic is said to be showcasing this 8K 35 megapixel, 8,192 by 4,320 pixels. It's an organic CMOS sensor with a global shutter. This organic CMOS sensor was introduced back in 2016 and since over the last five years has been perfected. Now the organic sensor replaces the silicone photodiodes that receive light in a current CMOS sensor camera with an organic thin film that is highly sensitive to light. Very cool, very cool. Now keep in mind, this sensor is a Super 35 and it's not a 35 full frame sensor. So what's the difference? Well, I'm glad you asked. Basically, the difference between a Super 35 and a full frame 35 millimeter sensor is approximately one lens length. So if you went and put a 50 millimeter lens onto a full frame sensor, and then you put a 75 millimeter lens, let's say, onto a Super 35, you'll end up with almost the exact same image. Also keep in mind, a Super 35 comes in like a three perf, which is like a 16 by nine, or a full aperture Super 35, which is more akin to the aspect ratio of an APS-C piece of film. The organic CMOS sensor has a much higher or a much better dynamic range, up to four times better dynamic range than a current CMOS sensor that we use today, as well as being able to produce video of 8K and having a global shutter. That is massive. Now we've talked about global shutters in the past and some people know what they are, some people don't. Basically, you have a current backside illuminated sensor that has a rolling shutter. What that does is it scans over that sensor to record the data. That's why you end up with that jello effect. Because when you take a picture, it is going to scan line by line across the entire frame and record that data. So if something is moving, if it's something extremely fast action moving in that frame, there's going to be movement and that's why you end up with that bending effect. So if you see a helicopter or an airplane prop or maybe a golf club and you'll see a bending of that golf club or a bending of that propeller, that is due to the way it scans across that sensor to record the data. A global sensor doesn't do that. It takes all of the data on the sensor and records it all at once. Every single pixel, every single bit all at once. So even if you have movement in the frame, it will not cause any of that bending. So a global shutter is where we're going to be eventually. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. 
So Panasonic has stated that their results are really promising and they're going to exhibit this 8K camera at the 4K, 8K video technology exhibit. This exhibition is one of the largest exhibitions of next generation optical technology in all of Asia. Now it'll be taking place in Japan at the Tokyo International Exhibition from June 29th through July 1st. So right around that time next year, we're going to see a lot of buzz from Panasonic. Mark my words. So bear in mind, in today's technology with a general backside illuminated CMOS sensor, if you're trying to capture high dynamic range and high megapixels, high resolution, you really can't use a global shutter. There is a give and take involved. If you want a global shutter, you have to go down in the amount of resolution and dynamic range. That is not the case when it comes to this new technology. Matter of fact, Panasonic is said to be working on the next generation of this specific technology that is going to be able to create even more dynamic range. They call it ultra wide dynamic range where they use two cells of a pixel. They have one highly sensitive cell and then they have one that has high saturation and they combine the two, basically the best of both worlds. Worlds. And what they're saying is the dynamic range on this next generation is going to be 100 times more than an organic sensor that they currently have and 400 times greater dynamic range than the current CMOS sensor or backside illuminated CMOS sensor that we use today. 400 times, guys. That is a ton. 400 times. So Panasonic is looking at this exhibition to see what the response will be by the people that are there, the attendees. There's a lot of big wigs that will be there. And if the response is really good, they are going to move up production and literally have it on the market sooner than later. So we'll see what ends up happening with that. So to me, even if Panasonic delivers on the global shutter and the organic sensor and it's 400 plus times as much dynamic range and all the rest, if they don't square away the autofocus issues that they have and actually incorporate phase detect with their current contrast detect, I think it's all moot. Many professionals need to have autofocus tracking and the tracking is simply abysmal in comparison to their competition. So while having all of these niceties of high dynamic range and global shutter, so you don't have that jello effect and on and on and on, if you can't get the focus right, you might as well just chuck it. So they really need to focus, pardon the pun, on their focusing system. And they've needed to do this for many years and I hope they just get it through their thick damn heads and go down that road. Now my questions to you are, one, do you think that all camera manufacturers are going to replace those BSI CMOS sensors that use silicone photodiodes with this new organic film sensor type of technology? Also, now that we see cameras like the new Nikon Z9 being able to read and write data so much faster that they can take the mechanical shutter completely out of the camera and only use an electronic shutter, is a global shutter even needed? In my personal opinion, absolutely. While it does get close to being like a global shutter, it's still not a global shutter. You're still going to get a little bit of roll. You're not going to be able to get extremely high sync speeds. And there's a lot of other issues involved. Also, if Panasonic does go live with this new 8K video camera that does have a global shutter as well as that organic sensor, will they trickle this down into their S lineup? Do you think this might happen? I want to hear from you. What do you think about the replacement of silicone photodiodes with a really thin organic material? What do you think about Panasonic as of right now? And do you think that they are going to possibly surpass Canon and Nikon and Sony when it comes to this movement, a movement into organic sensors as well as global shutters? I want to hear from you. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, even in the least, please consider giving it a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel. Tell your friends about the channel and click this little bell icon over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you. 
and me over the years, then hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.